Ernie Reyes Jr., how are you? I'm doing great, sir. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. Please don't call me sir. Just call me Scott. <laughs> All right, that, that sounds good. Ernie, I've been watching you for many years. God, goes back a long, long time. I uh, remember you in um, Red Sonia and, of course, The Last Dragon. And, uh, I, God, I was at school with um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all that stuff. I've been watching you for years, man. It's great to talk to you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, we've not met before. We've not had the pleasure of talking until now. So that's one thing I love about me doing this YouTube show is I get to talk to people like you that I've admired for so many years and incredible martial artists. Um, so let's get straight into it. Um, I suppose, really, to start at the beginning, we have to talk about your father, right? Correct. Ernie Ray Sr. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, my, my father had his, you know, martial arts school uh, before I was born. And so he was already training. He was part of the uh, United States Taekwondo team in the 70s traveling all around the world, competing against, you know, the best uh, Taekwondo people, Korea, uh, all over the world, basically. And, uh, you know, that was, so I was kind of born into it. We were already, like, everything was already in motion in terms of martial arts by the time I came around. So um, it really started with my father. So, I mean, when I first saw you do martial arts, you were extremely young, but what, how old were you when you actually started training? I mean, like I said, I was always around it. So like in the, you know, when you're, when you grow up in a martial arts school, it's really just like you're playing around all the time, but you're around it all the time. So you're already developing, you know, skills along the way, you know, but I probably really started training in around like seven years old. How old are you here and, and where is this and what it's it's TV show, right? How old are you here? Uh, there I'm probably about nine years old, T nine or 10 years old, maybe 10. Is this after your first foray into films, which would have been oh, no, 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 this is way beforehand. <laughs> right. So this is what we'd call like a musical form, sort of XMA sort of thing, yeah. right? Or yeah, I mean, yeah. XMA wasn't a thing, uh, but yeah, it was a musical form. You know, the thing about all of this stuff when you're a kid is uh, developing the attributes. So you could see Wushu in there too, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was like just little sprinkles of different things. Um, and I, I was into gymnastics as well, which I believe kind of, uh, this is how we used to train really. This was like, an example of what we would be doing constantly, you know, kicking back and forth. Um, yeah, I wish my son would do as he was told when I'm trying to get him to do kicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I know that. I have a son as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean... How'd you get, how'd you get the kids to do as they're told then, Ernie? How'd, how'd you get your kid to uh, do the martial arts when you tell him to? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different thing than... You know, it's a different thing than when I was a kid. You know, it was a different time period. Parenting was different. Everything was different, you know. Are you uh, saying that you had no choice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it was do it yeah. or you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, that's funny. So we were doing that. We were just training as martial artists. But, of course, Bruce Lee, like I said, had the influence. So movies were a thing for everybody in the late 70s of like, hey, you should make your own martial arts movies, basically. And we were doing that with, you know, the, uh, the film students in San Jose and making 16 millimeter films, you know, way before Hollywood. Like that wasn't, Hollywood wasn't even a thing. We're just in San Jose before it became Silicon Valley and all of that. It was just nothing. It was just farming, you know, basically a farming town. And so, uh, but we were already doing films. So that's why, you know, uh, as an actor and a martial artist, first of all, I was always a martial artist first, and then I got into acting, right? So, and then, and so all of that performance, that's like for entertainment, basically, yeah. right? For entertainment. How that applies to real world martial arts is just the attributes that you develop. 
right? Like if you take a gymnast, they're going to be pound for pound, the most strongest people that you can find. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't, those little girls to the guys, it's like, you're as far as body strength, you know, yeah. and I mean, you're control of your be, own body. I and mean, explosive if you're gymnast, power. Got, I mean, yeah. explosive strength, like, yeah, strength like, relative to weight. Yeah. And power too. Right. So it's not just yeah. like brute strength. I mean, to be able to do a, you know, triple back on the floor, like you got to be very explosive. explosive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about like being able to yeah. really torque very quickly, you know? And so that's what that, all that develops. Right. You know, cause I trained as a gymnast, like a regional level gymnast all through my like teenage years. Right. And I wanted yeah. to come, I competed in all of that kind of stuff was never really top right. tier, but I had, you know, top tier coaches. Like I used to train at UCLA when I was a kid with a gymnastics team that were like the Olympic gymnastics team, Mitch Gaylord, like that kind of level of stuff. And all that did was just train my body. Right. And that, those are the things that I see when I look back, it's like, well, what was the point of all of that? Right. A, it entertained and inspired and uplifted people. But B, just in terms of my own personal journey, is is developed all that those attributes. I was I was a forms champion when I was a kid. You know, I always wanted to fight, but uh, this was like after my dad was competitively fighting, and so he kind of began to steer in a different direction because fighting. You know, now he's in his mid thirties, and fighting was becoming not a thing so much, and so he started performing, and he had kids, and you know, I was really kind of had the temperament to be a fighter, but he wasn't really trying to get me to go down that road because he could see like, okay, well, where is, you know, where is that going to take him versus if I push him in this direction? Can you talk about your evolution as the fighting side of things into the real yeah. application of martial arts? Yeah, so boxing was always my thing, right? I loved boxing, just like pure boxing. You know, I had dreams of like being a world champion boxer when I was a kid, you know, and, you know, I had Muhammad Ali as my hero when it came to boxing. I loved his whole persona, what he was saying, and then all the old footage from the days of him being Cassius Clay. And so I tried to basically model my <laughs> boxing movement around that. And so I'd be at the martial arts school because we were there all day long. And I'd, you know, be wanting to be a boxer. And then we were doing the Taekwondo, a lot of Taekwondo, a lot of Taekwondo. Uh, then Olympic style Taekwondo, like Olympic level Taekwondo, right? Which is a different thing, right? It's like yeah. how they train. Were you competing much in, in the, the Taekwondo? Uh, no, but I was training with all the, right. the, the USA teams, Olympic training yeah. center people, like... We had Olympians in our, my dad's students. Then we were kickboxing pretty much after that. I was like, I got into kickboxing and that was, that was cool. Um, and then, so that was my foundation pretty much, which was Taekwondo, boxing and kickboxing. That was pretty much all the way up through till I was in my 20, like 20 years old. My thing was I always wanted to fight. Then it was like, okay, now I'm 20. I did the acting thing. Things were kind of like in a lull, right? And so I was like, well, I'm going back to the martial arts and I'm going to show everybody that I can actually fight. Like, I'm not an actor. Like, I can fight, like, for real, right? And I wanted to prove that yeah. probably to myself too and to prove it to yeah, sure. people. Why I was even thinking about proving anything to anyone, I have no idea, but I was in my 20s, right? So um, yeah. I got into Muay Thai. You know, um, and I fought a handful of times, fought on strike force. Um, you know, this is pre MMA days. Yeah. So that was like my evolution. And then over the years, we're talking about just striking. Uh, because, you know, I work with guys that are like high, high level jujitsu. That's not my, I would, I wouldn't call that my, like, that's not my, it's not even wouldn't call it. It's not my that's not where my expertise lies, right? My expertise lies on uh, standing up and striking. You've done a lot of work with the Diaz brothers, right? Yeah. Uh, and with and you're in their camp a lot. With yeah? Nate. With, with Nate. You know, I, I grew up huge fans of those guys. They're in California and they were like the OGs of, 
you know, California, like that's, they were, they were the, they were it, you know, uh, the early days of MMA and all that, that those are the guys. So uh, we yeah. always support, you know, the West Coast and California and all of that. So prior to even meeting them, I was like a huge fan. So what is it day to day for you uh, these days? Then is uh, is it training, teaching at a at a club? Or what what what's the deal these days in terms well, so, of martial arts? Yeah, well, so eight months ago I had a kidney transplant, and uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was on dialysis for seven years, right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, five a.m. to nine a.m right and you just do that for wow. seven years and it's like exhausting basically but i kept the, i kept moving right i kept doing what i what i but there was a limitation of how i could move right because you're on dialysis so these are not this is not an option for you to do or not do it's just you have to be here at 5 a.m to 9 a.m monday wednesday right. friday no matter what you think you're doing <laughs> right? right so making yeah. movies tv shows and all of that kind of thing was like not a real reality, even though I did continue to work and guest starred on TV stuff here and there and did some independent films and, but it was very, you know, challenging. I uh, stunt yeah. coordinated uh, a bio pick about the boxer Willie Pep uh, that's produced by Leonardo DiCaprio's company, uh, Appian Way. Um, and this was okay. like all on dialysis, <laughs> you know, so it was, yeah, kind of crazy. Um, but those days are yeah. in the past now. And so yeah, you feel, and how I, are you feeling these days then completely I'm feeling great, man. Yeah, really just like awesome, man. It, it's, uh, it's unbelievable to, 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 to feel the contrast from having to do something like that for that period of time to yeah. being free of that so the thing is is yeah you can do all of that and fighting and this and that and health and fitness and fun and this and that but like the martial arts really for me the value of it is being able to apply it in how you approach life right it's like i look at life as a martial artist right? You have to, because there's too many obstacles and challenges for what you actually want to do in life. It's like people that won't even want to say what they want to do because there's already a counter to why they can't do whatever they want to do or live the life that they want to live. So when I got the transplant, uh, you know, I had to kind of re I got to reset, you know, and ask myself, like, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? You know, and it always will revolve around martial arts because that's what it is. But for me, it's about martial arts movies. You know, I grew up doing that. That was always been my dream prior to being in Hollywood. It was the dream, like, and it manifested itself through the hard work and dedication, right? And the building yeah. of the craft. And it actually happened, right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is like, this is like my Bruce Lee moment right here. You know? Oh, the face. Yeah. I was always cha channeling Bruce Lee, you know, and everything I did as a kid, as you can see right here. Yeah. <laughs> the noise is uh, going and everything. Oh, the scorpion kick. That's my Cynthia Rothrock. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And then there's my dad behind me. Uh, and uh, yeah, these are all. Can I just say, I've got to say, Ernie, now how old are you here again? I'm 12. Now, look, this is one of the best back kicks I've ever seen. <laughs> I, oh, I had a really great back kick. That, that was my great kick. technique, man. I mean, the one thing that I will say about, like, you know, when I was a kid, I really tried to concentrate on, you could see my boxing and my Sugar Ray Leonard and Hamad yeah. Ali. It's all in there, you know? Uh, have you transplanted the demo into the film? Are you sticking to what you'd normally do with the team or have you? Oh yeah, all this, it? including the dancing and all of that, that's all, you know. Taking sort of what you were doing anyway and just putting it in the movie. Yeah, that was the all team. from the dancing. And I mean, my dad really did revolutionize demos in America at that time because it was all very like, huh, 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 you know, and it was very serious yeah. and like, 
then all of a sudden it was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it was like disco music. We're talking about the late seventies when we first started like doing this kind of stuff. It was disco and it was like, you know, jump kick routines to music. And it was like a whole kind of thing. We were doing skits, you know, way before people were doing skits when you were doing demos, people. So he really did revolutionize the martial arts demo because I saw what the demos looked like before and I see what they look like now. And obviously there's a, a huge influence on that. You know that it's like little pieces right? Little pieces that you put together, right? It's like, oh, this well, I, I, I'll say this. I couldn't do it live. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't have the cardiovascular ability to do all, all my stuff live. I, I need yeah. the takes. <laughs> you know, that was a thing too. It's like as a kid, because I was in like every, uh, every routine as a kid in our demos, right? And it, de it did develop that like massive conditioning. This is like a sprint the whole yeah. time, right? I mean, you're yeah. like sprinting the whole time. Yeah, you've you know. got the adrenaline pumping and all sorts, yeah. Yeah, I mean, live is like the real, you know, it's real because it's immediate feedback yeah. and you know, like, you know, so. No, I've, I've tried to do it. Back. I've tried to do it because I've done it the other way around doing the movies and then I've tried to do it live and I'm, and I'm like, absolutely not good. <laughs> Although recently I did a film where we did it all in one shot and that was hard, but we had yeah. to bring the explosiveness down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so true. hang on a minute. The last dragon is it was, it was a huge success, right? I mean, it was yeah. pretty big film at I mean, the time and it's now a cult classic. That's yes. pretty amazing. The, the first film yeah. was that. Yeah, and it's cool is 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 it set the tone like what I didn't realize until like way later on in life is is it was independent. I'm a big independent guy. Like even yeah. though I've had opportunities yeah. to work with like Disney, you know what I mean, and people like that. I'm an independent guy. It's just it's just in my nature. Well, talk me through this then. So this is yeah, a little blade work here. <laughs> Jump front kick. Oh, come on. Yeah. You should have done better uh, than that, Ernie. And you know, you Ron better than yeah. that. Well, I didn't want to really hurt her. I wanted her to be my wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> and then so here you uh, go. Ron Lacey, a classic actor, Indiana Jones, like amazing. This thing was yeah. probably one of my funnest movies to make in my whole life. He's not held back with the kick to the backside. He's well, really good. Yeah, that's it. why. My oh, dad. Right. There you go. <laughs> that's my dad. Kicking. White he on. definitely, he definitely was not. Now, hang on a minute. I remember this as a kid, and it was horrible. That yeah. was giving me nightmares. That's the worst <laughs> thing that could possibly happen to you. You know, and the director was uh, Richard Fleischer, who directed. He was like old school. He must have been eighty years old when we he, he when we did it. But you know he directed 20,000 leagues under the sea and like amazing, like old school director. And we were in Italy filming, you know, and, uh, you know, Arnold, uh, training every day with Arnold lifting after work all day. Well, you were. My dad, yeah, my dad had me lifting too, like, you know, <laughs> early on, uh, wow. like eight years old, my dad had me lifting and like, that's so why the we physique's would, so good in uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, we train, we'd film all day, you know, and then go train with Arnold at night, you know, him and Franco. So I had already seen Pumping Iron, right? Because really? we were about, yeah, we were about training. Like my yeah. life when I was a kid was about training. Like that was yeah. what it is. Like we were training, like nothing else existing, you know, and I bought into it as a kid. Right. So, yeah, there were times where I wanted to have fun, but I was about it, too. You know, you see Rocky, you start drinking raw eggs like it was that yeah, like, man. you know what I mean? Like, well, I don't so care. Like, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I was so, watching Pumping Iron as a teenager as well. Maybe not yeah. at 11, but certainly yeah. at 13. Yeah. So yeah. we would go and film all day and then, you know, we'd go to the weight, lift weights with Arnold and Franco Colombo uh you know after work it was like it was amazing you know 
but we got yeah. to it was the best movie you know that was my point we were filming in italy we were riding horses every single day on the countryside all the sets were real there were no cgi i mean these are huge castles we were in italy all the costume like all like the wardrobe was all handmade leather i mean it was like a real old school experience and we were just sword fighting every day hanging out with arnold and brigitte nelson it was like i was 12 years old it was it was it was uh an amazing Spoiled. moment So after The Last Dragon, Motown developed a show for me, Last Electric Night. And uh, they teamed up with Disney. And this was a Disney Sunday night movie that uh, was the pilot for the TV series Sidekicks. And this was Don Cheadle's first role. <laughs> yeah, you kicking his ass. Yeah. There's that back yeah. kick again. I mean, look at that. Yeah. That's just back brilliant kick. technique, man. Yeah. Bop. Yeah, it missed a little bit. I, I was pissed that I kind of slid to the side of him. I was like, damn, I didn't get him no, right. That's all right, because you, you're you digging the healing. Yeah. <laughs> you're making it even worse. Axe kick. Yeah. Axe kick and back kick were my things. They slowed yeah. that down. Uh, I was always mad about that. <laughs> ba -ba. Brilliant stuff, mate. Brilliant stuff. So Pat Johnson, who I've known since I was a kid, he was the, we had known Pat for a long time. And, uh, you know, it was a Golden Harvest production, which is a key element to all of that, right? Because this is bringing- Oh, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was Golden Harvest. How yeah. do I not know this? This is key. I've forgotten this. Yeah, this is right. key to it all, right? Because he's like, hey, do you want to do stunts? You know, we, there was four Hong Kong guys. This is the first time we're bringing Hong Kong stuntmen to work on an American production. One of the guys broke his back in uh, rehearsals. You want to step in? To, everyone's your size or whatever. I was like, yeah, Golden Harvest? Are you kidding me? Just the logo alone when it would come up i would just yeah, get me ready to go work out <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so <laughs> i can't watch the movie i'm yeah. too pumped up i need to hit the gym yeah yeah so golden harvest so yeah i was like yeah i'm in so i was in between my so junior and senior. you're taking the place of a hong kong stuntman and that is like as far as i'm concerned that's high level yeah right and at, especially at that time it was very much like kind of an unspoken thing that the hong kong stuntmen were like on another level you know what i mean because there's yeah. not all these regulations and you see it's like hey man you're just jumping off the top of that building and hitting this crash pad yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? and uh yeah. so but i was i was like i was i was like oh i'm gonna go in there and you know do my thing <laughs> So how was it with the suit? Doing oh, it was the I mean, it was crazy. It was a huge rubber latex thing. We were in North Carolina. It was the middle of summer. It's like a hundred degrees outside. You know what I mean? And you're just doing what was, fights. What was your visibility like? I mean, it was nothing. It was just like, you know, you yeah. could just, I mean, it's just nothing basically. Um, was it flexible enough? I mean, obviously it must have been because you're doing the high kicks, but did it pull on your legs? I mean, uh, yeah, the it, there was resistance again? everywhere you went. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. Did the shell going. get in the way? Yes. Especially when you're doing trying to do a back handspring. <laughs> you know I mean? So if you're going to do a back kick, you probably can't see where you're I coming mean, it's kick just, at all. You've got yeah, to just it's all have feel. training. Yeah, yeah, it's all feel and, you know, timing and rhythm with the sun guys. Course. Uh, now you stunt doubled for Donatello, right? Yeah. And he's the guy with the staff. Yeah, he's the guy with the staff. And what was cool is, is that Pat, you know, uh, he let me choreograph everything. So I would just choreograph like, oh, we're in the scene. Okay, this one to do whatever, whatever. And then he would look at it and like either give it a, a thumbs up or like say rework it or whatever. But he always was like, that's awesome. And then that was it.
Did you have to brush up on any of the weapons? Were you choreographing for the other turtles as well, or just yourself? No, just my own staff. Everybody yeah. just did. So were you experienced with the um, the staff in a wushu sort of way before that, or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I had done yeah. staff like a wushu style staff, and then the more Japanese bow, um, yeah. which is kind of the way that I did it in the movie. It was like I didn't want it to look like wushu y You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they are ninjas, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Bruce Lee, I mean, a lot of the thing, go back to Bruce Lee, right? That was kind of always yeah. my thing with the bow staff when in Enter the Dragon. It was like, that was that. Even the pose you see with when I, I bring it under and I have the thing, that's like a Bruce Lee thing. <laughs> it always comes yeah, back yeah, to that. Yeah. When I was younger, it always came back to that. So by the end of the movie, they were like, we're going to write you into the sequel. And that's what they did. Six bucks. Hold it! Huh? You guys are under arrest. What are you, night security? Well, no, actually, I'm a pizza delivery. <laughs> yeah, this, so this was on a set in North Carolina, and this is all, the, you know, this is all choreographed stuff, stuff that I got to choreograph. So, um... You're very precise there with that kick, because the yeah. angle's not the best, and it... Yeah. And you're no. right close to his head. It was like, yeah, yeah, barely. Yeah, so that was uh, that was that was fun. Would all the you know, fights it, be filmed in one take, like it was a performance, like on stage, which I know you're used to, but yeah, yeah, pretty see, the much. The Hong Kong like way the of doing it would have been piece by piece, but of course, America, the way they shoot things back those days, it would yeah. have been with all the coverage, right? Yeah, and. Uh, you can see like you stay wide, you know, and the tempo of the editing is, you know, a lot slower than, you know, what we see when they're trying to cover up people's inability to actually do the things. Oh, yeah. Keep the camera wide with you and just let you do your thing like Bruce Lee and Tony Jaa. Yeah. So and like I said, Pat was, you know, gave me free reign. So I was just like. Get to and you know at this point like it was all demo stuff you know not stuff that i had been like doing live but stuff that like where my mindset was at the time i mean it must have been a, a big thing knowing like the success of the first one oh, and then yeah. coming in and doing the second one and having a, a leading role out of the suit knowing that this is going to be a huge summer blockbuster quite, yeah, quite a huge. thing right I mean, yeah. it was like, it was one of those moments in your life where you're like, holy, you know, you L front cover of the L, I mean, uh, LA Times calendar section. Like, it was just, it was one of those moments, you know, it was amazing. It was really amazing. This is a Disney Channel movie that we did called Secret Bodyguard. And uh, yeah, this is kind of an interesting thing. Is it? Yeah, after a lot of people, This is like movie. right around the same time. Okay. Yeah, actually, I had done. You no, know, the real timeline on this was Ninja Turtles. I had just done Ninja Turtles two, and um, I had just done Ninja Turtles two, but it hadn't come out. It hadn't come out yet. And, th and we filmed this. Is that your dad? That is my dad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're always working together, you guys? Yeah, up and yeah, pretty much, yeah. This was kind of, yeah, I mean, it was from being a kid all the way up to about this point, you know, where most of our stuff we had done together and the choreography, you know, I'm beginning to, you know, I just came off of, uh, me and my dad boxing to the body together. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> After Ninja Turtle 2, that Monday that it opened, New Line called, called, called up and said, hey, we want to make movies with you. And this was the first one. And this only is one. Phil Tan here. Right. It is Phil Tan, yeah. Yeah. Phil and again, Tan. you're with you're with your dad. Yep. 
unleashing the physique. Yeah. Yeah, and you could see, right? It was like, just continue now, I'm 19, right? In comparison to like Ninja Turtles 2, which was a couple of years ago. Now I'm 22 years later, still training, still lifting weights. Now the height you get on this move here. Yeah, jumping off the back. That's crazy. That's crazy, look at that. <laughs> so this is kind of that, that one is the evolution of what we saw when I did the last electric night and I jumped off the guy's back and split kick. Now I just jumped off his back and turned and hook kicked him. But then they cut to the wrong angle. They should have, they should have just kept it wide. Bang. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the problem was is, yeah, they weren't, you know. You can do so much of this live and in one shot. They're really spoiled for choice. Um, yeah. Whereas exactly. normally, I mean, I would specifically say, no, no, let's, I'll just do this bit and we'll get it cool and then we'll, we'll focus yeah. on the next bit. But because you're so used to just doing all this stuff live. Um, yeah. And you know what, just like the other part of it is, is like when I choreograph, what's important to me are the moments in between the action. That's very important to me because that's where character is revealed. That's where, that's where, that's where you can see like the reality of it's just action, action, action. You don't get a chance to, it's the moments that are in between to me that like really make a great fight scene, you know? And I, I learned that from Bruce Lee. It wasn't just like, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was all those moments, you know, yeah. in the middle of the fight. Right. And so we, we remember, we remember. Yeah, this yeah, exactly. More than whatever technique you did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I remembered a bit with the cheese when he, he bites, the, he kicks those guys and then he just bites the cheese. <laughs> See, there the you fury. Go. Yeah. yeah. Heads up. That is okay. So how long did you spend on this particular fight sequence? Filming it, from what I remember, was just maybe around three days or something like that. Or like, but like including everything, right? It's like the lead up. There's a lot of things going on prior to the fight. Um, but we got to, the cool thing was on this one, we got to rehearse for like three weeks. Right, yeah. So that, that always, you know, that always makes a difference. You can actually train it in condition you know, uh, condition it. Was he all so right? The, rock? the fun fact. He, was he okay taking the hits because of his oh, wrestling great. background? Yeah, yeah, it was, he was great. I didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? And a lot of times prior to working with him, I was like, I don't know. Sometimes like working with bigger guys, they're just, they don't have the, the you rhythm. Know, just, yeah, they don't have the rhythm. They're just, you know, for me to, to do what I want to do. But he was just like, obviously, he's world class, you know, when it comes to, to that. So it was great working with him. Mean, it was like amazing, you know? Yeah. Just the time. You know, a cool guy, that, I'm told. Nice guy. Yeah, really good guy. Andy Cheng um, bringing the sort of Hong Kong flair to this with the yes. wires and everything. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah it was awesome. Yeah, it yeah, was awesome. Great and I In love the, this film. I think still to this day, it's one of Dwayne Johnson's best movies. I, I've heard that a lot. It's cool. It's a good film, man. A great film. And Peter Berg directed it. It was, I think, one of his major first major studio films. I, I love this movie. Yeah, uh, not really just because I'm in it. It's just a fun movie, you know. And well here's written, the thing: well is, is it was 15 years in between Surf Ninjas and this, and nobody saw me do anything. So what was going years. on there then? Did it just go? What was the well, reason? Well, I was so after Surf Ninjas, Surf Ninjas wiped out at the box office, and I was the lead. So it all fell on my shoulders. Yeah. But that's right at the time when I got into Muay Thai. I was like, oh, all right, that's cool. You know, yeah. funny, funny stuff is fun for a while it lasted, but now like I'm gonna 
do some real shit. And that's when I started training Muay Thai right at that point, 19, 20 and around there. Right. So it was like, all right. So by the time I got to um, the rundown, my style had changed. You could see it. It's just, there's a little something different than from surf ninjas. Right. And that's 15 years of no doing any films or television. I did a few things, a handful of things, but like people that didn't see me do any action and every day that I trained, those were my prime years of training, like twice a day, always six miles a day running all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like that was my routine, boxing, everything wow. like, you know, uh, and so, um, you know, I trained knowing that that moment would happen at some point. And when it does, you know, I'm going to show, I'm going to show, you know, everybody, basically I'm, I'm going to show everybody that, you know, I'm on another level than what I was at what appeared to be the height of my career, which was Ninja Turtles, whatever I've gotten better. That's it. Like that was my key. I was like, I'm about to blow everybody away. And I train like that. And I would tell my training partner at the time, listen, we don't, there's no movie projects or anything. We're training, running at the track, UCLA track team, like all real training, right? Like sprinting workouts, yeah, yeah. like track athletes, right? It was like, that's what I was doing to be get in shape, right? For no reason. That's, yeah, that, and that's the thing is, is like when you're in Hollywood and you're pursuing this as an action star, you're training every day or whatever, whatever for this. It's not for a fight that's coming up. It's just for a maybe, right? But it's yeah, like, yeah. I learned through my dad and the training. It's like, no, when it comes time, just like it did with The Last Dragon, we were ready. It wasn't like, hey, uh, we had put in all the work. So 15 years later from Surf Ninjas, I get an opportunity to work with The Rock and, and shine you know, with Andy. And I was ready. I was trained. I wasn't in shape. I didn't have to diet. I didn't have to get in. I was, yeah. I was walking around. Stay ready. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Otherwise, it'll sneak up on you and you won't be ready. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and they will knock. They, they will knock. Why? Because it's already established in the DNA of pop culture and that kind of thing that like, hey, somebody's going to say, are you ready? Right? And you're like, of course I am. I've been ready my whole life. Well, Ernie, thanks so much for doing this, mate. I really appreciate it. I've been watching you for so many years. Long may it continue. And uh, you, you're one of the best fighters I've ever seen on screen, and I mean that. Just, well, you, you're an incredible martial artist through and through from, from the lineage from your family. Um, keep doing what you do, my friend. It's, it's great to chat to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you having me, and it's been a, a great conversation. And, uh, you know, maybe one day we'll get a chance to work together. Stay ready, Ernie, because that right. might happen. <laughs> All right, and I'll try to stay ready too. Okay, sounds good. Thanks a lot, Ernie.